Hey everyone, this is my modified 23 gauge pin nailer. Now right here is a special regulator designed to work with standard paintball tanks. Currently I have an ultra portable setup using this 12 gram CO2 cartridge adapter and it can easily provide power to pneumatic tools like this one. Let's see what this thing can do. Okay, so let's take a look at the traditional setup. You probably noticed these aren't the same models. They actually discontinued this one here, probably to save money by lowering the quality. And I could have settled with the new version you see here in the box, but there are some really great features to the older model. And overall, I just think this version looks way cooler with the anodized aluminum. It almost looks like a brass or a copper almost like a steampunk look to it. Also, there's a much nicer switch right here, and also this mounting bracket, which these can be removed. If I wanted to 3D print a platform or add something to move over, that way we can attach our regulator. That's also an option. So what do you think? Leave a comment below. I'd love to hear what you have to say on your different suggestions on how this can be upgraded, and which one do you think looks better? Now, funny story, I actually had to secretly swap out the one that was on display using tools that I found around the store. And I only needed an Allen key and a crescent wrench to remove the bottom here. And then I had to remove the set screw in the bead that was attached to the steel cable that was going up the actual industrial plug here at the bottom. Naturally, this is the best thing I could come up with at the time, and it was actually really easy but kind of nerve-wracking because I probably wasn't supposed to do that. And feeling sort of guilty, I ended up buying the tools that I actually used to remove it from the display. And I don't really see the harm done because in some way I helped the store by updating their display rack with new model that they actually were currently selling. So overall, I'd say it was worth it. No harm done. Now I have modified this version and I removed this, what I'm calling the hammer plunger assembly. This is actually placed right here traditionally and whenever you pull this trigger it rams forward and this little needle tip is what jams the nail forward, hence hammer plunger. I'm actually going to be swapping out the bottom cap here and putting it back onto the actual nail gun so we can see what kind of power it has in its intended form. And I noticed something really interesting. The sticker right here says that it has 120 PSI maximum. So I'm really thinking that's interesting because right here on the original box, it says between 60 and 100. And then on the newer version, it says in the very front, 90 PSI, which is the operating PSI, and then again, 60 to 100. So nothing's really changed, but the new version does not have that sticker. So I don't know if they've changed the amount of power that these things can take, if that was a reduction whenever they changed the quality of it, or if it's just they're putting a 20 PSI as a room for error, just in case someone goes over 120 as the absolute maximum to save people from destroying their rings and maybe even having this thing damage them themselves. I mean, that would be horrible if it actually exploded in your hand because you went over 120 PSI. But most of the time, it's just going to break an O-ring and it's going to start leaking out all the air. I'm definitely going to max this thing out because I want to see what this thing can actually do. Now this thing doesn't really stick on there, but you can see what I was talking about before about creating some sort of bracket. And then whenever we actually attach the CO2 cartridge and the little handle here, it'll go to about there. So I can kind of mess around with this, but I think that'll work pretty nicely. Now if you're into airsoft and paintball, you're probably familiar with this sort of mechanism. What you have here is a little cone that is actually sort of like a needle tip but it's much stronger. And what that will do is pierce the top of our CO2 cartridge. These are made out of steel and there's a little thin diaphragm that this is going to basically puncture. So you take this here and you place it in like so, screw it on. And once you feel the tension right about here, you're gonna to wanna to twist really quickly that way. It's gonna seal down on the little nylon cap that was in there that you saw. And there you go. You can see the gas is going up. Now you can see it's right there at 120. If I was to go over, I can always go back and remove some of that gas. So it's nice to have 
basically a valve that can relieve the pressure if you accidentally go over so this thing doesn't break. So let's bring it back up to 120 PSI because that's what it said on the box. Inside of each of these cartridges is 12 grams of liquid CO2. Now after doing some research I found that there's about 800 PSI at any given time within each of these. This is dependent on the temperature of the gas and as we release it from the cartridges it's going to become colder and the pressure is going to drop which means that after some time we're going to have to wait for the temperature to rise if we want to fire off at the maximum pressure of 120 psi. Now let's take a look at what temperature we're at now with our infrared thermometer. 68 degrees Fahrenheit and let's see what the temperature is after we've emptied the cartridge. Alright, so let's see what a 120 psi blast of air looks like if we just shoot it without any nails. The target is going to be this packaging container for a light bulb. You can see we're right about 120 psi. Let's raise that up just a little bit. There we go. So there was still one in the chamber, but that's actually a perfect example right there. You saw how much more power came out of firing the blast of air in the second try than the first one. So I'm really glad I didn't decide to like try this on anyone just because I thought it was a blast of air because you can see it does have a decent amount of penetrating power here one in about say about half an inch or so. Now if I was just shooting with regular air again see it's still pretty consistent. So you can see it's actually over 120 PSI, but it does take time. All right, let's like shoot it right on the actual CO2 cartridge there. And it looks like we're at 40 degrees. So there's about a 15 degree temperature difference of insulation from the actual little metal handle here. But on the actual cartridge, we're at about 39 degrees. Actual ice cubes would be around 32 degrees. So pretty cold stuff. Let's go ahead and load up a fresh cartridge. It's actually more air in there after we fired this already a couple times. So you can see that as the temperature lowers it becomes more condensed and you're not able to actually get the amount of power you would out of the CO2 cartridge. Let's go ahead and swap one of these out and test it out with the nails. Alright, let's go ahead and load this thing up. We have one of our clips, I guess if you could call it that, and it's telling us with these arrows which way this is supposed to face. Let's slide it in right there. And this little mechanism here is pretty cool. It actually allows you to change the length of nails that you're going to be using. Now in each of these stacks there's about 84 nails, but we'll see how many we can actually fire off before this thing runs out. So go ahead and keep an eye on the actual pressure gauge you can see. Nice! So still at 120 psi, let's fire towards the center. So we did about two shots there, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight. Let's do a little rapid fire. And you can keep an eye on that pressure gauge there. As we go lower, it's not going to shoot and penetrate into the actual box. It's just kind of ricocheting right off. So now it's, it's going to slowly climb. Actually, as I hold this thing, it's pretty freaking cold. It's like probably around 40 degrees or so, but it's zapping heat off my hand and allowing the gas to expand a little bit faster. It's actually past 120 PSI and we're still okay, so I don't know, I guess we're testing our luck here. Yeah, so pretty much looking at like 15 to 20 shots. So let's go ahead and try this one more time. 120 PSI, each shot. Let's see what this can do. One, completely glanced off it. Two, 
three, four, five, six. Freaking cold. 39, 40 degrees. So yeah, we're looking at like 10 to 15 shots, depending on your patience. And I feel like realistically, you're only gonna get the first five or so that are gonna be at that pressure where you're gonna actually have a good result. It's pretty interesting. It's almost like the needler from Halo. Please post a detailed comment below and let me know what you think. To me, it's extremely important because you all inspire me to be a better maker and reading the feedback you post is a huge motivator for me. I really think this setup has a lot of potential and I already have a few ideas in mind. Harnessing the power of these CO2 cartridges could lead to some really awesome projects. Now I'm totally aware that I could get way better results using a full size paintball tank. I'd probably have to attach it to a backpack or a belt clip, but I think it's way more badass to have everything together in a compact pistol setup. And I'm going to continue working on this, but that's all I have for today. Thanks for tuning in, and take it easy. Where is it written that all our dreams must be small?